Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today we're going to be revising our list of the top 10 GX Pokemon in the format right now. Now, when I say right now, I mean before Crimson Invasion comes out, and before the Ultra Beast promo GXs come out, we are only looking at ones which are available right now, and have been used in tournaments right now. Now, we look at my last list, oh my goodness, it's an embarrassing mess. To be fair, number one and two on that list are absolutely fine and good and dandy. The rest of the list is a bit of a mess. I always thought Lorantis was going to be good. I have been proved categorically incorrect about that. So today, we are changing up the list a little bit. And we are looking at actual results and how they have worked. So start off with some honourable mentions. Darkrai GX... Decidueye GX still sees a bit of play, but Forest of Giant Plants leaving really hurt it. Alolan Ninetales GX, Solgaleo GX, and Metagross GX all got consideration for this list, but unfortunately did not make it all the way. So starting off at number 10, Tapu Bulu GX, that I want to put higher, and could easily be argued to deserve to be higher... But the thing is, it's played with Vikavolt and Tapu Bulu Vikavolt has just not seen as much success lately. 180 HP, no weakness, and really here it's all about nature's judgement. Free energy for 180 damage if you discard them, 120 if you don't. Add a choice band, you're KOing stuff like Golisopod. Without a choice band, you're KOing stuff like Tapu Lele and Drampa. Really powerful Pokemon, and when you... Add in Vikavolt, it's really quite good. In at number 9, Turtonator GX. Now, Turtonator is really good in Expanded. It is less good in the standard format. But it's still got 190 HP, which is great. It can still do 160, 190 with a choice band, hits key numbers on stuff like Darkrai and Drampa, and it's just plain good. It doesn't really carry decks by itself. It needs stuff like Ho-Oh to be really, truly competitive, but it's still a good card, and it comes in at number 9. In at number 8, Necrozma GX. Now, Necrozma here is really just for the GX attack, Black Ray. And it's much better in Expanded. The difference is, with Garboda, it might now be the best deck in Expanded, because Dimension Valley means you can use Black Ray for just a double colourless. So even though it's only really good in Expanded, it's so good in Expanded that I felt comfortable putting it on this list and putting it in at number 8. And don't sleep on the ability which gives you immunity to colourless Pokemon like Drampa and the upcoming Sil Valley, which isn't eligible for this list but will be for the next. In at number 7, Ho-Oh GX. Again, we've got 190 HP, which is a lot, but the key point here is Phoenix Burn just does 180. Just flat out 180. And we talked about with Tapu Bulu, with a choice band, you're hitting the numbers on stuff like Golisopod, Except, actually, you're hitting a great weakness as well. Metagross, Solgaleo, Golisopod. You're hitting all of these for weakness, which really, really helps. But a choice band will still get something like an Espeon. Not only that, but it has a lightning weakness, which makes it super useful in decks with Pokemon like Volcanion and Turtonator, which are weak to water. Well, this has a different weakness, so it can be used against water decks. Kiawe gives it the speed it needs to really get up and going fast enough, and it is deserving of its space at number 7. In at number 6, Espeon GX. Now, this really was popular with Garboda. It's being a little bit displaced by Drampa lately, but let's not sleep on how good it can be. It's got the Sun and Moon Eevee, which means you attach a Psychic Energy and immediately evolve it up. You can then use Psybeam straight away. 30 plus Confusion is great. Psychic 60 damage plus 30 more for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon is awesome. I mean, against something like a Ho-Oh, you're just getting a one-hit KO because they've got four energy. That's 120. Plus the 60 is 180. You add a choice band, 
you get the KO there and then. It hits numbers very nicely here. Incidentally, it also hits numbers beautifully on Tapu, Bulu, and Drampa. And then you've got Divide GX that just allows you to pop 10 damage counters anywhere you like. That's really handy for finishing off multiple Pokemon or KOing little Pokemon before they become a threat. Jumping over it though, into number 5, Drampa GX. Drampa GX is colourless and basic. And that's why it gets so high up on this list. And it is high up on this list. But one colourless energy, 20 damage plus discard a special energy. That's pretty cool. Or Big Wheel GX that gives you a new hand of 10 cards which is frankly ridiculous and really nice with Halla. Halla gives you a new hand of seven cards so turn one or two or very early on you can use big wheel then for the rest of the game you get to use Halla. either way things is going good then you add in berserk if any of your pokemon on the bench are damaged and people generally use things like po town or rainbow energy to damage their bench pokemon or sometimes your opponent will play a tapu coco use a flying flip and then all of your bench pokemon will be damaged and then you can just do 150 for free energy it's colorless so you can use double colorless energy which is quite good add a choice band you do 180 and pokemon like tapu lele and tapu bulu are going down it's really good and it can be used in any deck whatsoever in at number four Glycopod gx now this is a new entry on the list because it only came out in burning shadows which was our previous set the thing is Glycopod is just great and it's not a card that can be put into any deck whatsoever and it's really not very adaptable it basically does one thing but it does it so well for one energy it does 120 damage as long as it became active this turn so it needs to be on the bench and come active during your turn not start the turn on the bench come up after a ko whatever but the thing is, it's got 210 HP. So unless you've got something like a Tapu Bulu with a choice band discard in the energy, or something like a Ho-Oh hitting it for weakness, then you're not actually getting KO'd by basically anything. So then in comes Ace Roller to allow you to just reuse Golisopod, pick it up and put it down. But it's a single energy Pokemon. And it's a stage one Pokemon. So as long as you get two or three Wimpods out and with... Bridget, this is as easy as it's ever been in the Pokemon trading card game, then you can just attack for 120, use an Ace Roller when you get hit, put a new one up to hit for 120, and off you go. Now, people do use it with Rainbow Energy and stuff like Garboda just because it's a one-energy attack, but it is almost ludicrous how efficient First Impression is. Now, doing 100 when you add a double colorless... And then reducing damage done next turn is fine. 150 and flicking to the bench is nice with a choice badge of KOing stuff like Tapu Lele and Tapu Bulu. But really here, first impression is just way too good to put it any lower than number four. In at number three, Gardevoir GX. Gardevoir GX is one of those cards where everything about it is good. Ability that allows you to attach an extra energy per turn good attack that does 30 damage for each energy attacked to you and works with double colorless energy good gx attack that allows you to recover resources good resistance to darkness good not to mention the fact that galade evolves from the same pokemon so it fits nicely into that deck and the 230 hp is nothing to sniff at you've just got a ridiculously good pokemon it won the world championships for goodness sake it's that good now as a side note i'm gonna put sylveon in here as a special mention i struggled a bit with sylveon because the thing is sylveon only sees play with gardevoir but really, it's Gardevoir that's great, and some people don't play Sylveon, but Sylveon deserves to be in the top 10, but it's only played with Gardevoir, so we're popping it in here as a special mention. I know it's a bit like cheating, but it's the best we could do. But as far as I'm concerned, one and two in this list are super easy. Number two, Zoroark GX. It's just come out in Shining Legends, but it's got the whole Drampa syndrome going on. 
except it also adds consistency. It can be put in any deck whatsoever. Riotous Beating does 120 for a double colourless energy as long as you've got a full bench. That's a really efficient attack. Add into that the ability trade, discard a card from your hand and draw two, and the fact that you can combine that with Mallow. Mallow puts any two cards on top of your deck. And then you draw them with trade, which is ludicrously good. And it's the fact that the ability adds consistency to any deck. And it acts as an attacker for colourless energy, either in any deck or using double colourless for one attachment. It's almost stupid how good this is. And that's why it's got to come in at number two. And that's before even mentioning the GX attack, which honestly sees very little play because no one plays it in dark decks. And at number one, and it was number one on the last list, and it's number one on this list, it's Tapu Lele GX. And I did think maybe I could put Zoroark there, and then I thought, don't be stupid, Wossie. It's Tapu Lele. It's got to be Tapu Lele. No weakness is ridiculous. The attack energy drive 20 damage for the energy attached to both active for just a double colourless is really nice. But even with all of that, it's just the ability wonder tag. You get to search for any supporter card you like. And the amount of people right now that just go wonder tag for a Bridget turn one to get all of their basics out and going is ludicrous. I've got nothing in my hand. That's okay. I'm going to play a Tapu Lele, and maybe I want a Sycamore. Maybe I want an N. I can do whatever I want. Oh, it's the late game, and I need to drag a Pokemon of my opponent's bench to take a prize. Good news! I can use Tapu Lele to search for a Guzma. It would be no exaggeration to call it disgustingly good. There's a reason the regular art is about $80 to buy one. It's a clear number one. I don't think you can argue with number one and two, but I want to see your top ten list. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossie, and Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. That's where the live action happens. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, you can do so at patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.